What is up everyone? Today we are looking at something that honestly scared me when I dug into it. We always talk about malware, phishing links, and bad apps, but we rarely talk about the invisible computer inside your phone that runs 24-7, has complete control over your data, and you can't even see it. I'm talking about the baseband processor. This is the chip that handles your 5G connection. It decides what signals to trust, and for the longest time, we assumed these chips were locked down. We assumed they were secure because they are proprietary black boxes. Well, I was wrong. I've been analyzing the latest research on the Samsung Shannon baseband, which is the chip inside millions of Samsung Galaxy and Google Pixel phones, and what I found is a disaster. We are talking about seven zero-day vulnerabilities, remote code execution, and a secret developer backdoor left in the production firmware that lets me turn off all security checks with a single switch. To understand the hack, you have to understand what we are attacking. Your phone actually has two brains. You have the application processor, which runs Android, your games, and your apps. Then you have the baseband processor. This is a separate computer with its own CPU, its own RAM, and its own operating system. This chip is a beast. It reads millions of complex radio packets every day. It handles the NAS layer, or the non-access stratum. This is the language your phone uses to talk to the core network for things like registering your device, logging in, or setting up a call. The problem is that it is a closed system. We don't have the source code. We can't just attach a debugger. It is a black box. And because it is so hard to test, it turns out the code quality is actually quite poor. Historically, security research into these components has been stifled. Unlike the Android processor, which is largely open source, the baseband firmware is a proprietary binary blob, heavily optimized for specific hardware peripherals and guarded by non-disclosure agreements. This opacity has forced security researchers to rely on either static analysis, which struggles with complex state logic, or limited black box fuzzing, which fails to penetrate deep into the protocol stack. The research specifically targets the non-access stratum. In the cellular protocol stack, NAS is functionally distinct because it carries signaling information between the user equipment and the core network that is transparent to the cell tower. NAS handles the most critical functions of the device's lifecycle on the network, such as authentication, mobility management, and session management. The NAS layer is a high-value target for attackers because NAS messages are processed post-authentication but often contain complex parsing logic for variable length information elements. Furthermore, historically, NAS implementations have been under-tested compared to the lower layers like radio resource control, leading to the hypothesis that deep-seated vulnerabilities reside within its message handlers. Usually, when I want to find bugs, I use a fuzzer. I throw millions of random junk packets at the target and see if it crashes. But basebands are smart. They have things called state machines. If I just send a random call setup packet, the baseband stops it and says you haven't even registered yet, so I'm dropping this packet. This is called the state explosion problem. To find a bug deep in the call setup logic, I need to send a perfect sequence of 10 or 20 valid messages first to get the modem into the right mood. Standard fuzzers just can't do that. So, how do we break in? I looked at a new tool called Loris. It does something brilliant called dependency-aware fuzzing. Instead of guessing, it emulates the firmware. It literally runs the Samsung firmware on a computer. It uses a technique called symbolic execution to read the modem's mind. It looks at the code and figures out exactly what variables need to be set to pass the security checks. It works backward to figure out exactly which packet will set those variables correctly. It creates a map of the modem's brain. It identifies the specific bytes in memory that decide if you are connected, idle, or authenticated. By manipulating these variables, it can force the modem into deep, vulnerable states that a normal fuzzer would never reach. To achieve this, the researchers first had to overcome a massive architectural hurdle. Older Samsung modems utilized ARM Cortex-R processors, which operated in a flat physical address space, making them easy to emulate. However, starting with the Galaxy S20 and Pixel 6, Samsung transitioned to ARM Cortex-A processors for their basebands. 
These processors utilize a memory management unit and virtual addressing. This seemingly subtle architectural change broke existing emulators because they didn't know how to translate the virtual addresses used by the firmware instructions into physical memory offsets. Loris was explicitly designed to bridge this gap, becoming the first framework capable of emulating the Samsung 5G Shannon baseband on Cortex-A architectures, thereby opening the door to fuzzing the modern 5G NAS stack. Even with the state machine solved, the researchers faced a formidable security barrier known as integrity protection. 5G NAS messages are protected by robust cryptography. Once a security context is established, all subsequent signaling is encrypted and integrity protected with a message authentication code. The baseband calculates the MAC of incoming packets using a secret session key. If the calculated MAC does not match the packet's MAC, the packet is discarded immediately. A fuzzer cannot generate valid MACs because it does not know the session keys derived during the simulated handshake. This means that even if Loris generates a perfect crash-inducing payload, the baseband's security check would reject it before it ever reached the vulnerable parser. But while analyzing the firmware with this tool, I found something that shouldn't be there. Deep inside the binary of the Samsung Shannon modem, there is a check. I found a function in the firmware that references a string called fake test harness. It checks a specific flag in the permanent memory of the chip. If this flag is set to true, the modem disables all security checks. It disables encryption. It disables integrity protection. It accepts plain text commands from anyone. It basically says, I trust you. Random signal from the sky, come on in. This isn't a bug. This is a developer feature that Samsung engineers used for testing and forgot to remove. It is a key to the castle left under the doormat. If an attacker can flip this one bit, maybe through a browser exploit or a malicious app, they can strip away all the 5G security layers and feed raw, malicious packets directly into the modem's brain. Once the security checks are gone, the floodgates open. Using the Loris tool, we found seven critical zero-day vulnerabilities. Let's look at the most dangerous one, which is the stack overflow. In the 5G logic, there is a function that handles event reports. It takes data from the network and copies it into a temporary storage space in memory called a stack buffer. The problem is that they didn't check the size. If I send a packet that is larger than the buffer, it overflows. It overwrites the memory next to it. Now, usually this would just crash the phone, but we are looking for remote code execution. We want to take control. Modern chips have a defense called a stack canary. It is a random number placed on the stack. If I overflow the buffer, I overwrite the canary. The system sees the broken canary and kills the process before I can run my code. It acts like a tripwire. But here's the crazy part. I analyze the memory layout of the Shannon modem. The stack canary isn't random. It is generated once at boot, and I found exactly where it is stored in the memory. Even worse, that memory page is writable. It's a sleepy canary. It is useless. Since I know where it lives and I know the memory is writable, I can use a separate bug to read the canary value or just overwrite it with my own value. Once I bypass the canary, I can overwrite the return address. Instead of the function returning to the main loop, I make it jump to my code. At that point, I own the baseband. I can listen to your calls. I can turn on the microphone. Marin. I can use the baseband to attack the main Android OS, and you would never know. So, who is affected? I checked the firmware versions. This code runs on the Samsung Galaxy S21, the S20, the S10, the A41, and the Google Pixel 6. If you own one of these phones, you have been walking around with a modem that has a disabled security switch and a broken stack canary. Now the good news. After this research was presented, Samsung and Google acknowledged the bugs. They assigned security numbers and released patches. But it scares me that this code was out there for years. It shows that even in the 5G era, where we talk about military-grade security, the implementation is often sloppy. We have engineers leaving test code in production. We have memory protections that are misconfigured. This research proves that we need tools like Loris. We can't trust the vendors to police themselves. We need to be able to look inside these black boxes. If you are a researcher, I highly recommend digging into baseband fuzzing. 
The barrier to entry is high, but as you can see, the bugs are massive. I'm dropping the technical details and the paper in the description if you want to see the exact assembly code we analyzed. Stay safe, update your firmware, and remember, just because you can't see the computer doesn't mean it can't be hacked. One life, one shot. Make it count.